Hey folks, in this interview, it's all about LED lighting with Udi Tirosh. He's from a company called Spiffy Gear. This is Twitter. All right, folks, welcome back to This Week in Photo. My name is Frederick Van Johnson. I am your host today. I've got Udi on the hot seat. We're going to be talking about LED lighting uh, and all things thereof. We're going to get to the bottom of a couple of topics. Um, hot on my mind is LED and strobe and how they work together. Do they work together? Should you be choosing one or, or the other? So we're going to talk about their line of products, the Spiffy Gear line of products, as well as a bunch of other interesting topics. So Udi's on the hot seat, like I said, to to walk through these topics with us. Udi, what's going on, man? Hey, what's up? What's up? You are over in Israel hanging out. It's the end of the day for you. I it's, am. Yeah, it's yep. morning for us. You're getting ready to go out. And you you were telling me before we started that there's a, uh, yeah, we're in the middle of a, of a sort of a holiday celebration season over there. What's going it on? Is. It is. It's called Lag Baomer. And it's like basically everyone that can go out goes out and makes a bonfire. So there are a bunch of bonfires outside. You can actually smell it, right? Even in here with the AC on, you can smell all the smoke that's coming from all those bonfires. Wow. Wow. So they're everyone's there. probably getting drones up just to see the... I was going to say, that must be some good some good drone shots out there. I, I live near an airbase or an, an NFZ, but everywhere else, people are getting drones up, like, you know, getting all the bonfires. Some, some are actually not burning men huge, but pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. We'll take some pictures. Share them. I want to see. I want to see this. Hi, <laughs> we'll, we'll do. All right. So let let's start with the beginning here, um, and we could be brief on this. So just the the origins of Spiffy Gear and how it relates to because you also run a site called DIY Photography, right? So that how, is correct. How does all that stuff work together, and what was the what were the origins of Spiffy Gear? So actually, Spiffy Gear and DIYP are two separate entities. Um, I'm, I'm involved with both, but right now I'm way more involved with Spiffy Gear. And a lot of the Spiffy Gear products that we make came from me being a photographer and needing the gear. So every, actually every Spiffy Gear product used to be hacked together when I needed it as a photographer. Um, the Light Blaster, we started with like a foam paper, for, for foam core paper mm -hmm. and that was the first iteration of it and then uh, I saw that people really liked it so it evolved into a product. Specular actually started as a huge ring light that was back in the days where ring lights were uh, I don't know cumbersome fluorescent lights that you couldn't take them out on the field uh, they were very fragile did not produce a lot of light and, and expensive just not and expensive and really not fun to work with. Right. I mean, if, if the production called for it, you have to you had to get it. But they were not fun. And uh, we needed a ring light. So we thought we couldn't get a ring light. So we made an octagon. And then we thought, hey, that can be so much more than a ring light. So we made those flexible hinges. Uh, we're going to talk about specular later. So I'm yeah, to yeah, I definitely wanted to. Yeah, I want to talk about that. And that, that was the specular product is one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this interview, you know. Oh, awesome, yeah. Be because it's 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 amazing, and I think it's one of those those lighting products that solves, a, like you were just saying, it solves a particular need, and uh, it's modular, which I'm a big, friend, uh, a big fan of, things <laughs> that allow you to configure your lighting for certain situations versus you configuring your situation for the lighting, right? <laughs> so, yep, 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 yep. Yeah, yeah. The, and so, yeah, we no, go for it. We started off with the every light you need, but then we figured out that that, that was too pretentious. I mean, we, you're almost at the last light you need, but not. we don't solve everything. But we solve a lot of complex situations. Right. We're very, very flexible, so we can you can turn the light into a ring light or into a strip light or into a regular light panel. Um, and right now we're pitching a super flexible light, very travel-friendly. Um I'm going to send you some pictures later so you can see it falls down to a really, really small package. And, um, and this is the specular and, we're talking about, right? Yep, yep. So those are specular lights. And if you scroll down right here, so you can see all the different configurations that the light can turn into. Yeah, look at that. 
Okay. And this is what I was staring at and sort of drooling, uh, you know, like <laughs> looking they're at what you drool proof. Yeah, they're not. No, they're not drool proof yet. That's the next version. Right. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's coming up in V2. And for the folks that are listening to the audio version of this, I, I uh, encourage you to head over to spiffygear.com slash specular, S-P-E-K-U-L-A-R. And that will take you over to this this grid that we're looking at. And basically, just to describe it for the audio listeners, this is kind of like one of those. You've seen these like lightsaber light. What is it? Uh, ice light esque kind of devices. But this one is it looks to be lighter. I haven't held one, but it looks to be lighter. And it's modular in that you can connect them in a number of ways. So you can cr- like Udi was saying, you connect them and create an octagon or a star or a box or whatever you want to create from these things or just use them individually. Right, Udi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that that is actually quite precise. Yeah. Thank you for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. You can see I've been I've been nerding out looking at your your page. <laughs> so so this this stuff is is awesome. So looking at the looking at the product line, right? So one of the questions that comes to mind is the you know, like I said in the intro there, LED versus strobe. So, you know, there are pro photographers out there. I mean, I play devil's advocate, right? So pro photographers out there that'll say, or not even just pros, anybody, you know, any, any photographer that's doing, you know, that uses artificial lighting will say, well, you're not a real photographer unless you use a strobe <laughs> or pro photo gear. You got to you got to spend at least this much money. Pro photo gear will last you forever. And it's the industry standard. It's like the Microsoft word of, you know, of the industry. And then there are other photographers that say, you know, the the camera technology and sensor technology has evolved to a level where the quality of the sensors and the low light sensitivity of the sensors allow you to not have to be tied down to, you know, a, a burst of light. You can do continuous lighting. I want to know where you sit on it. You make this stuff. Where do you sit in I there? Is is it is it left or right or is there is there is a sliding scale? So so there's not, of course, um, there's not, we were talking about how photographers like to be binary. So yeah. <laughs> I don't think yeah, I don't think it's a binary decision. I think it's a more of a horses for courses yeah. kind of a situation. So of course the obvious difference is that strobes will give you a fl- uh, you know a flash of light or and you get one very bright instant and then it's dark the mm-hmm. second later mm-hmm. whereas uh, with continuous light you can see what you're shooting. Right? So you see where the shadow falls off without taking a test shot. Um then the other difference is that strobes, even with very bright LEDs, strobes are still significantly stronger, uh, you know, dollar per light or dollar per lumen. Mm-hmm. Strobes are still significantly stronger than LEDs. And the last thing is, I think, when you're looking at, just like from a technical aspect, mm-hmm. is that, you, you, you know, just like usually from a very high perspective, strobes are giving uh, a more accurate light and um and you know all this thing comes with a a, a few results or consequences so of course if you're using continuous light you're it's easier for you to place the lights you Mm -hmm. can see exactly how the light will fall on your model's face Um, but then again if you're using bright light then the your model is going to have um shrunk pupils right so you'll have a very big disc of color and you know, and that, that that that's an artistic choice, mm-hmm. right? Some people like like or w- what we're used to seeing is uh is black pupils that are slightly slightly larger mm-hmm. than what you'd get, and if as, than what you'd get if you're looking at it. We're gonna edit this. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I hear what you're saying because you you yeah, yeah. you get dilated pupils if or your di- yeah. your your pupils are more more dilated. If it's a lower light source and if you get a, a big burst of light, yeah, people are, you know, it's like an iris. It's an F-stop, right? So yeah, yeah, it's the, exactly. aperture, the eye and the aperture is going to shut down to let less light in so it doesn't destroy your brain. Right? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, this is what we've been accustomed to for a very, very long time. So this is what we're looking for when we're looking at portraits, Yeah. Where, whereas LEDs is con- are continuous. So you're going to get a very tiny pupil. And again, it's an artistic choice. Some people like it. Some people don't like it. But you have to be aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, and the other thing, Udi, is, is the, the the shooting portraits, you know, like we were talking again before we started recording, we were talking about the story in the typical fashion world with strobes. It, it It's 
even the models are accustomed to the cadence of the photography because the photographer will click and it's pop, new pose, pop, new pose, yep. pop, new pose. So they know what's going on with continuous lighting. You know, if you're especially if you're shooting a, a silent mirrorless camera, they have no idea when you've taken the photo or when you haven't. So that, that changes that the correct. dynamic a little, right? Yeah, actually, I have a friend. His name is Maol Cohen. He's an awesome shooter. He's he's usually doing videos, but he's now shooting a high end camera. And what he's doing, he's taking a continuous film, a, a continuous video, and then he takes uh, shots out of the video. Yeah, this is the resolution, but he's not. So actually, he's like he's continuously um, uh, shooting the model, and then look later in post, he'll say, "I want that that microsecond here." Yeah, I want and that microsecond there. So there is actually no cadence at all to the shoot, right? And that was that was the flowing through it. That was the holy grail of like cameras like Panasonic, you know, where they they shoot 8K stills and 8K bursts of video that then you can later go in and harvest. I call it harvesting. You go in and <laughs> harvest the the particular shot, you know, so instead of, okay, trying to get the Cartier-Bresson decisive moment, you have a decisive range of time, and then you go in and pick the right one, you know. But like you said, it's a resolution thing. With eight, with 4K, you know, it was it was okay. With 8K, I think it's it's starting to get realistic, you know. But again... Even even then, you're not getting raw files, so you're not going to be able to edit, uh, you know, not. to that to the degree nope. that you could a, with a raw file. But right? also think think if you know we used to say or like whenever we're here, I'm going to fix it in post. You mm-hmm. like no. you slap <laughs> like, no, you get it right in camera. Yeah, right. Yeah. So think what that's doing to the to this entire, uh, um, you know, there there's a saying called spray and pray, right? Mm-hmm. So think what that's doing to the how how we're moving into spray and pray, how that could be signaling a moving towards spray and pray and getting away from the actual capturing the moment. Because say one of those, you know, I just saw I just shot 60 frames in the last second. One of them is probably going to be good enough. And, yeah. you know, for me, this is this is um, I don't like this concept. Yeah. I like when you pause your model, you make sure that everything's OK, then you click. Yeah. 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 Um, that's the artistic, the art, you know, you're, you're building the shot, you're professional, you're building the shot versus yeah. hedging your bets. And okay, I know something in here has got to be good. It's like you said, like the, the spray and pray concept is like with a, with in war, you know, you have a machine gun and you're just like, you know, I hope I get something, you know. <laughs> yeah. And you know, when you're doing 60 frames per second, you know, something probably will be, you know, you, you can probably turn something in there. <laughs> right. But you will not, you, you, you won't know that until in, until you've reached the post stage of your production, right? So yeah. whereas when you're shooting stills, you can always look and say, hey, this is what I wanted to get. And yeah. You know, like, move a little bit that way or move a little bit that way. To, you know, take your chin down, take your pose a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, straighten your head. Yeah. And in video, you don't get to see what you've actually shot. So you, you don't know. Interesting. And I, 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 yeah, so, you know, I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm saying that some people work like this. I don't know about a lot of photographers who do this. I, I find it interesting. I'm, I'm actually very curious to see where this is going. Yeah, I, I'm, I am curious as well. I think it's like you, like, like we were talking about, binary, right? Every, the, this stuff, these different techniques and different methods of image capture, different lighting, um, they're all choices that should be in service of the overall story or image that you're taking. It shouldn't be a, hey, I am a, I shoot this camera only and I use these lights only and I use continuous lighting only and that's my style. That's what I do and everything, you know, I'm a hammer and everything's a nail, right? It's, <laughs> it should be, I, right? I'm building a I house. What are the amazing. tools I need to build a house? Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. I find it amazing that whenever someone says, you know, I just moved from, Nike, you know those posts, right? On you see that on the web every once in a while. I moved from Nikon to Canon. It, it used to be that. Now it's I moved. To, everybody's moving to Sony. I ditched my uh, my um, my SLR for a mirrorless, mm-hmm. or I moved from Canon to Sony. And those are becoming so. Uh, so you know, if it gets the shot, it gets the shot, right? Um, some of my friends are still shooting with a Canon 5D Mark II, and they're happy with it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah. So you know, but it it, 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 it it's depends. interesting to see. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's interesting to see that whenever brands come up, people start getting very religious about. Them. It is. It is. Isn't that crazy? It is. People get religious. I call it. I call it uh, digital Stockholm syndrome. Because you feel you're you've invested all this money and you're kind of trapped by you know by your investment, so therefore you feel like you have to defend it to others. And you know, Udi, your camera is crap and mine is better because I spent three grand on my system, and therefore, yeah. you know, I must be superior and my my decision is better than yours. So, this and in the end, who cares? Are for. Yeah, in like, the this end, this is what speed boosters are for. <laughs> you can swap cameras. Thank you. you can swap systems. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And in the end, I mean, you know, we can move on, but in the end, I think it's it's um, it's a fool's errand to argue about different camera bodies and who's better than whom and, you know, all this stuff, because that is in the ecosystem of photographers, you know, photographers talking to other photographers, the people that are enjoying the final product don't care about how you got to that. I mean, those are your customers. Those are the people that that are viewing the final product. They don't care if it was a mirrorless, a micro four thirds, a full frame, continuous versus strobe or whatever. They just want to see the great shot that you did. You know, they're not going to dissect it. Yes. But also if you look at like the cameras that you had just three years ago and people will say, my camera is doing this better. Your camera is doing this better. And like they'd argue. So the cameras that we have today versus three years ago, they're doing all the things that were like, you know, they're, they were finding about three years ago. So and three years ago, we had great photos, right? We had great photographers three years ago that were shooting with cameras that are now considered old. So anything you get today is probably good enough for what yeah. you're doing. Right. Yeah. I, I remember back in the day, I'm going to date myself here, but the, <laughs> I, I played around with the first digital camera. One of the first professional digital camera uh, cameras, it was a it was a uh, hybrid of a Kodak spinning hard drive with a Nikon camera. Those. But yeah, it was a Nikon. It was called the Nikon DCS 420 system. And it was basically a Frankenstein of a hard drive and a camera body together, a Nikon N8008, 8, I think it was the, the body. And you'd go out and you shoot and it would record a sub one megapixel image to the hard drive that you could maybe get 20 shots. <laughs> you know, it was crazy. And now you fast forward today to today and we've got these, you know, artificial intelligent you know, smartphones that can do all this crazy stuff and post before we even look at the image and you know, it's it's a completely new world in just a few short years. Totally. So, you know, yeah. I, I've heard someone saying something that I connect really, really strongly to. They said that gear enables you to do different photography kinds. So, like, if you're shooting underwater, you need a certain kind of camera. If you're doing sports and you need the speed, you need a certain kind of camera. But generally saying, gear will not make your photography better. So whatever you can do with a, with a 5D Mark II or with a, a Canon EOS X, you, 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 whatever you can do uh, concept-wise with a new camera, you can do with a camera that's like five, six, seven years old um, with a crappy lens and, you know, so they, it will not make your photography better. It will just enable more types of photography. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, people get, people get caught in, I call it the eddy of gear upgrades and I have to get this thing or, you know, I'm a fan of, you know, like Jake Hicks, you know, I want to, I've taken some Jake Hicks RGG EDU tutorials. So I have to buy the exact camera and lights that Jake Hicks uses. Cause that's going to be, you know, I'm going to do that style of photography, which I think yeah, no. it's, yeah, it's Jake okay. Jake Hicks to, has been taking awesome photos for years now, even yeah. before he had the camera that he has now. He's just such a strong visionary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and this is where the, the quality is coming from. It's not coming from the strobe or that strobe. Light is light. Yeah, it's coming from the photographer. Well, let's talk about that. So, the perfect segue. So, light is light, <laughs> right? But not all not all LEDs are created equal, right? That so, is correct. That so, is correct. and I'll tell you, let me set the stage for you so you can give us, you can educate us. So, the, you know, if someone goes on Amazon, there's, and types in LED lighting or whatever, there's a you know, an endless scrolling list of different options that you can get. And sometimes you'll see two strobes that look this almost identical or two LEDs that look almost identical. And one may be 25 bucks and the other one may be 250 bucks. From a layman's perspective, you know, the person, the customer may be thinking, 
okay, some funny business is going on. Somebody took the, you know, they're both the exact same light, but someone is pricing theirs more because, you know, of X, Y, and Z. They're just trying to gouge the customer. Or is there something else going on? Talking to you, there's something else going on. Let, let I, I, Fill us in on that. I have some good news and some bad news for you. <laughs> so the good news, the good news is that if you're shooting black and white, you can get the, the cheap lights. It doesn't matter as long as you're shooting black and white. But once you go into color, um, you want to make sure that you you want to make sure that you retain um, the actual color that your eye is seeing. And there's a there's a there's a index called CRI. That's color rendering index, and it's a number between one and one hundred. And the higher it is, the better the light. And what this light, what this number means, is uh, how much of the of the color is being reproduced by your light. So cheap LEDs. Um, so the, you know, LED technology is relatively new, and cheap LEDs. You know. Um, I'm sorry. LED technology is relatively new and cheap LEDs, uh, you know, they're not using the best materials they are not using the best uh, coating for the LEDs. And that means that not all colors are representing in the light that is coming out of the LED. Mm -hmm. So a good way to think about it is if you're looking at a, at a, how do they call, how do they, uh, I'm going to be a total uh, non-English speaker. How do they call this bow? A uh, rainbow? in the sky. Rainbows. Yeah. Thank you. So they're looking at a rainbow, right? And the rainbow does, uh, what they do, what the rainbow does is it diffracts the light and then you get all colors of the light and you can actually see it going from red to yellow to green to blue to purple and so on. So imagine some of the LEDs, if you break their light in that way, you'll get no red. And of course, the human skin has a lot of red in it. So if you take this light and use it to light a person, that person would be greenish or maybe purplish. It would not look like exactly like you envisioned them to be. And I think this is a lot of where, so using high-end LEDs versus low-end LED, low LEDs uh, has a lot to do with how much the actual fixture costs. Yeah. And you should look for something. If you're, Here's a tip. If you're buying a light, Look for something that says CRI. If you don't find that index, that means that the light is probably not something you want to use for photography. Mm. Um, if you are seeing that index, you want to get something that is 90 and higher for any any color reproduction that is good enough for video or for stills. So when, when you say color reproduction, how does that relate to, because I know some LEDs allow you to vary the color, right? So... Are, are we talking specifically about when the LED says I am emitting daylight and you should know or tungsten, you know, you should know that this color is pure, 100 percent reproducible daylight. Is that what we're measuring? Because if you go off of that scale and you move into I'm doing creative Jake Hicks effects and now you're, you know, you're emitting some sort of magenta or something, then all bets are off. Right. Or am I wrong? Um, so as long as you stay within, I mean, your eyes can kind of. Uh, decide that everything is white, right? So if you look at the fluorescent, it's white. If you're looking at sunlight, it's white. If you're looking at candlelight, you know, if it's not a really insane yellowish, you would still consider it white. Yeah. And just like looking around the room, you see a lot of different stuff and you're saying this is white, this is white, this is white. Whereas in reality, they're not all in the same color. Mm -hmm. uh, and this similar thought process applies to color temperature. So more more wavelengths are being represented in different kind of lights. So daylight will will have more blue in it and tungsten will have more yellow in it. But in general, they will represent all the different wavelengths, um, which is good. Yeah. But if you go to a cheap daylight LED or a cheap tungsten LED, you will get very weird color casts. So, for example, uh, when there is no red, the skin becomes green. Mm -hmm. And um, early LEDs, I know if, if you do a Google search for green tint or green tint LED, you will see a lot of people mm -hmm. raving about early LED technology. Uh, not raving, I'm sorry. Dissing the early, early LED technology because, you know, um, we had um, tungsten and we had halogen and those were great lights but mm -hmm. they were very hot yeah literally they were hot to touch oh yeah and then came leds which were cheap and light and not as fragile 
So the first thing that people do is put LEDs in the photography gear. And then they realized, hey, this is maybe not such a good idea at the moment because LED technology is not there yet and everything looks green. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter. You know, like you said, it doesn't matter if you're if you're shooting black and white. You know, it that's, doesn't matter if you're shooting. Black right. Because now you just need to light the thing, you know, versus yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the most part, you know, for the most part. Yeah. So if you only have crappy LEDs, so they shoot black and white. <laughs> there you go here's, and that's my style thing. my style is black and white you yeah. know because i can't afford to shoot i that. don't like color yeah yeah exactly i only shoot available light you know um well cool man so i want to i want to continue this i have some notes i want to i want to let's dive into the products a little bit so we talked a little bit about the specular uh product but you've also got one called light blaster that you guys are yeah. you you're you've got out there in the wild that's actually shipping now tell me tell me about that the impetus of it who's it for what does it do so actually, Light Blaster came I, back in my uh, – when I shot a lot of portraits, I wanted to shoot portraits with a projection. And uh, I had like a, you know, a flimsy projector, the one that you use in, uh, in classes. And I'd project that either on the model or on the backdrop. And it was never bright enough. I had to ask the model to pause for, you know, I don't know, one thirtieth of a second not to move. And if she moved just a tiny bit, then we'd get blur. Mm -hmm. So I thought, why not use the power of the strobe in order to produce a very bright projection? And this is the light luster. So it enables you to project any image that you want onto any surface. And you can create worlds with it. So you put uh, 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 a fast lens on one end and a strobe on the other end. And in the middle, you can put a slide. And that slide has a picture. And, uh, you, you, you know, you can either use your own slides or you can buy slides online or you can even send an image um, to a service and they'll give you a slide. And those are the same. Do you, do you remember when your parents forced you to sit down and watch their trip from Europe? Slide after slide. <laughs> yeah. after slide. Do you remember that? Yeah. So these yeah. are the slides. Yeah. These are the slides that we're using, and um, this is sort of your sto your standard slide mount Kodak whatever slide that you. Yep, can... yep. So the thirty five millimeter that goes into a carousel thingy. Yeah, those are the slide. And if you don't have a, a, a certain, now of course this comes down to creative choice, right? So if you don't have the slide that you want to use, you can either print one at home on just you know a transparency, which is what you're seeing right now that this little uh, this little girl. Mm -hmm. Or you can order if you want higher res, you can uh, send send uh, a 4K file to a service, and it costs like a buck, and they'll send you back a slide. Yeah. And then you use the power of the strobe to project that to to make this projection very very bright. So this shot, this this photo, uh, and again, this is kind of goes to our conversation about you know photographers being binary, right? <laughs> so you're yeah. using strobe and continuous lighting here mixed together, right? I know actually this one um so if you go one one picture back this is the setup picture for that that picture so the setup picture use the doll and then uh, uh the, the photographer's name is massage mm -hmm. and that's the actual shot but the way that he set it up if you go to the setup picture to the one after that this? he has yep yeah so he has one soft box which is lighting the model, mm -hmm. and then he has the light blaster. And if you can see at the at the rear end of the light blaster, there's a strobe, mm -hmm. and this, that strobe syncs with the camera and blasts this pattern on the back wall. Okay, okay. So, so these are, these are both works. both the light blaster obviously is using a strobe, um, and the 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 main light that's lighting the subject is a strobe in this case, right? Yes. Okay. That is correct. But here's the nice thing: when his girl turned around, there was nothing on the wall, right? That image only exists in the, that fraction of the second where he clicks the camera. Oh, very cool. And you could create a like you said, you can create a world. Uh, in this in this case, anywhere it looks like a conference room or something. You know, you can uh, basically yep. create a shot like this almost anywhere. That's crazy. Yep. So I know some wedding photographers who carry the skit in their in their pack, and if they get to a venue and all the walls are boring, they just use this to splash some patterns on the wall. Yeah. Wow. Look at that wings. Look at that. Very cool, man. So who whose idea was this? Is this your brainchild, or or did you? Uh, 
you know, did you work with some engineering focus groups or how did um, you come up with this? No. So like, I think uh, light projection has been there for that. That one, uh, just before I talk about where the idea came from, that one was shot in my basement. And that's my son. He wanted at, at that age and time, he wanted to be a pilot. Nice. And th there's not th th there's no airplane behind him. This is just an old slide that we had. And um He's standing only a meter and a half or, I don't know, like three, four feet from the wall. Mm -hmm. So if you have a small studio, this is what you'll be able to get. And where's the where's the the strobe, the light blaster placed in reference to, you know, in in, in, in this frame? He's, it's standing. So if you draw a line, so there's a camera, my kid, my son, and then then there's the light blaster. So he's actually blocking the we're not seeing the light blaster. Oh, it's behind my him. kid is standing in front of the light blaster. Got it. Got it. Okay. That is too cool. Yeah, I can see the creative effects that you could do with this. This is just ridiculous. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. That is really again, cool. This, again, my basement. That's actually a funny story. So when we shot the commercials for the Light Blaster, one of the stories we had is a guy proposing to his girlfriend. And we shot this. So the wall behind them, of course, is empty. And they, they're having a picnic. And then um, they they hand a camera to a pass, you know to a passerby, and Matt, who is the guy in the picture, set up uh, a slide to project Mary me on the wall. So a guy comes in, Matt says, "Hey, take our picture." He takes their picture and then hand it back to them. And only in that, only on the back of the camera, it says "Mary me." Ah, uh. here because of the production, and that was a commercial we did, and then. Three years later, I got a movie from a photographer, and this is how he proposed to his girlfriend. So he actually reenacted the commercial in his studio. He called his wife. He, he, she wasn't his wife yet, but he called his girlfriend and said, hey, we're going to take some pictures. Then he snaps her, shows her the back of the camera, and on the back of the camera, she's there with a marry me slide. That's so cool. And she said yes. Yeah, of course he did. Yeah, how are you gonna say no to that? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that is awesome, man. So what what is that what is that retail at? What's the retail price of the the light blaster? So it retails for ninety nine dollars, and you can buy it either on speedfigure dot com or uh, you can buy it at any big uh, camera store, B and H or Adorama. Enjoy your camera in Germany. There's any major any major uh, photography retailer Got will it. hold us. Got it. Got it. Cool. And is it on Amazon and, and those online? It is on Amazon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It is on Amazon. Or um, we're going to have a coupon at the end of the at the end of this podcast. Yep. Um, so I'm going to send you the code and you can share it with your uh, with your audience. Then you get a little bit off the retail price. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. I was going to beg for that, you know, for the <laughs> on behalf of the TWIP listeners and oh, the TWIP on. pro community. <laughs> Oh, continue, continue. Oh, yeah, yeah, keep it. Yeah, please don't stop. Don't stop, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, so finally, new products. I know you, you've you got some new stuff coming out, too, that you, that I want to get, get our eyes on. What are you guys working on? What's in the what's in the labs, the uh, the spiffy labs over there? <laughs> so our let the latest thing that we've showed, uh, we showed it at NAB, and we actually got product of the year for it. They're called Lumi. And it's a small light, so you'd use it as an accent light or a selfie light. Um, and there are two flavors. There's a bicolor one and an RGB one. Let me let me turn on the bicolor. And, you know, it's not insanely strong. Mm -hmm. It's battery powered, um, bicolor. So let me, at, at a selfie distance, it's strong enough. So if you're at a, at a, at a controlled environment in the studio or in a dark place, it, it will hold some light. Mm-hmm. And then the nice thing about it is, uh, let me show you. Do you remember those bracelets from the 80s? Yeah. You can go one, two, boom. And it slaps on your hand. It's always with you. Look at that. Um, yep. And, you'd, you'd, uh, be the, you'd be the king of the uh, the rave <laughs> with those on. You had to put two on and I'm, just I'm go out to your techno forever, music. So. <laughs> but for raves, for raves, we have this one. And this one is actually an RGB light. Yeah. So... It has colors, and then within those colors, it has more colors, and it also has effect. So if you do a long press, you can see the light is breathing right now. Oh, nice. Or which one is that? That will simulate fire. So you you need to see my hand, and it kind of looks like there's a oh, fire. Oh, yeah, that is cool. Kinda. 
And uh, yeah, those will be awesome. For I don't know if you'd pay the price of this product for a rave. We're using the same LED lights that we're using for specular, so they're very high end yeah. LED. Sierra is above ninety four, I think. Oh wow! So um, those are the real yeah, deal. No. What, what, what's the those price of the those? Real deal. So it'll be. We haven't announced them yet, but price will be rough. Oh, let me turn this off. I'm gonna slap once again. So look at that. The price will be roughly fifty dollar ish. We're not sure. Oh, not bad. Exactly. Not bad. Yep. That's cool. Yeah, and, and mounting wise, how do you are, are they mountable? Like, do they have a tripod slot in there or a, is, so? Of course, anything round they'll slap around. So mm -hmm. if you have a light stand, if you just want to mark, if you're on a production and you want to say, hey, um, uh, let me do this. You're in charge of all the light stands that are green. You can just slap it and, you know, your system know that if it's green or if you want to mark the end of the territory or the end of the – so nobody goes over that. So um, you can obviously slap it. Yeah. Um, there's a little mounting hole here. I'm sorry. There's a little mounting hole here. Oh. There's a little mounting hole here. Yeah. So you can always hang it. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, they're magnetic, so – I don't have anything made out of metal here, so I'll just show oh, you. Oh, so you can just stick them on a light stand if you want to. Yeah, you can just, you know. Okay. They'll they'll uh, attach to anything um, anything metal, and we're gonna they're gonna ship with a with a little mount that can either be connected to a tripod or to a light stand or connect as a hot shoe adapter. So we'll be able to place those on a camera, or uh, just screw them on a light pot, on a on a tripod. I love it. I love it. Can I can I make a request? Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm talking to the guy. I want everything <laughs> you just mentioned, um, but also want a GoPro mount adapter on there so I can use that the entire actually... ecosystem of GoPro mounts, suction cups and everything with that system. That way you guys don't have to build anything. Just I could just attach it. That is actually a very good. I'm going to pitch that to my designer. That is actually a very good idea. It's all yours. It's all yours. Make it happen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So just send an invoice. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Cool. That's awesome, man. Okay, so what's coming up? You guys are, yeah, I know you're present at a lot of trade shows. My friend Chris Berry was telling me that he met you guys at Photokina. You're out there, you know, showing yep. off the, the, the hardware. What's, you know, there are lots of trade shows coming up next. Where are you going to be next? So our next trade show is going to be IBC. That's in September in Amsterdam. And we're also going to be at PPE in New York in october Got are, you, are you gonna be there i PPE will be at ppe or? yes yeah i will Perfect. i will be i will be at ppe in the panasonic booth again so i think oh I think. nice so nice, yeah nice, it's nice. almost let's, well, let's get some beers yeah. or coffees or something oh yeah no yeah beers beers yeah not yellow yeah, beer we'll have like some brownish <laughs> beer <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke <laughs> about Fotokina. We were talking about the beers in Fotokina, which are not actually beers. They're more like piss water. Yeah, they're well, it's German efficiency, right? So it's, you know, it, <laughs> it's just, it come, goes in the same way it comes out, right? <laughs> so, yeah, there you have it. Why use, your, why use your digestive system when you don't have to? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Okay, so where, where should people go if they want to go pick this stuff up? We mentioned some of the retailers that have them. Um, if they want to learn more about this, see some videos with people using this stuff, what's a good place for them to head over to? Definitely. So uh, go to uh, spiffgear.com. That's mm -hmm. where all the things are at. And you can start navigating from there into the lights or the light blaster. Or if you go to spiffgear slash Lumi, L-U-M-E-E, -E, you, um, you can sign up for the announcement for those lights. Okay, cool for the for the I call them the Wonder Woman lights, but the uh... <laughs> the Wonder Woman. We are not calling them the Wonder Woman lights. <laughs> Come on, those are Wonder Woman wristbands. All right, all right, we'll call them uh, Captain Marvel wristbands. <laughs> uh, there you, you go. There you go. Captain I'm Marvel, Marvel guys. So. Yeah, the Marvel. Mar if you want Marvel Avenger powers, then just get these lights, and you're good to go. Yep. There you go. Cool, Udi. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate your time today. It's been fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, any any time, man. Any time. All right, take care. Spiffygear.com, right, is the is the main website? There you have it. All right, spiffygear.com. Check them out. I'd love to know what you guys think about Spiffy Gear products as well in on TWIP. So if you're in the TWIP Pro community, 
there's a thread in there, I believe, already with people talking about Spiffy Gear products um, uh, and in the blog post for this and in the YouTube video. Sound off. Let Udi know what you think about the products. You know, do you need them? Do you want them? What else do you need? You see he's receptive to comments like the GoPro <laughs> thing. So, so go ahead and tell him what you need and, you know, Udi will build it, right? All right, man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate your time today. Thanks a lot, Frederick. All right. Take care. This is Twitter.